Okay, let's continue with some examples, but this time we're going to work with fillet welds. Just a reminder of the rules before we get started. These tips for the welding analysis, remember that we are going to assume that stresses are uniformly distributed over the smallest cross section that could cut the weld in two and separate it, uh, the two parts of the base metal. We also pretend that stresses and fillet welds are always shear stresses, so we're not going to be super careful about the direction in which the load is applied uh, versus the surface normal of the cross section that we're considering. We're going to assume that they are shear stresses and we're going to analyze them as such. So this next criterion that normal stresses should be less than 0.6 times the yield strength of the weld material, that's not going to apply here because we've got shear stresses. And this one is important to us. Shear stresses need to be less than 0.3 times the ultimate tensile strength of that weld material. With that in mind, let's analyze this problem. We have two pieces that are welded together, piece one and piece two. And the weld symbol is telling us that on both the arrow side, so this side here, and the other side, this side here, we have one quarter leg size welds and they are each one inch long. And this is telling us the same thing. Normally you wouldn't be redundant, but I'm just showing it in two different possible views that uh, this is, imagine that uh, this part is in a bowl and you're sliding it up towards the edge of the bowl and now it's coming out at you. This is what it would look like. Now let's imagine what this weld looks like in practice so that we can analyze it. So the fillet weld is going to look like this. So the weld material is like a little triangle when you view it from the side, and this is one quarter inch. We usually call that the leg size, we call it H. H equals one quarter inch. Okay, then the question becomes, we say that the stresses inside the weld are uniformly distributed across the minimum cross section that could cut the weld in two and separate the two parts of the base metal. So one place that we could cut it is right here, right? But that actually doesn't separate the two pieces, right? We've still got some weld material that is connecting the two pieces. So that's not a cut that we can make that would separate the two pieces. It'll separate the weld into two, but it won't separate it from the base metal. Likewise, you can imagine cutting it right here, but we've still got some of the weld that's in contact with the base metal, so we haven't entirely cut it into two pieces. So this is a valid cut. It cuts the weld into two pieces, and it separates the two pieces of the metal from one another. We'd have to do this on both sides. You could say that the area of that is going to be approximately one quarter, because this is also one quarter. It's one quarter in this direction and one quarter this direction, times the length of it, one inch. So you'd have about 0 0.25 inches squared. Now, we want the minimum cross-sectional area, and th the worst case is this one, right? Because then the cross-sectional area is whatever this length is between this vertex here and uh, the side the, the midpoint of the hypotenuse of this right triangle. What is this distance times the length? That's going to be our worst case. So that, that is what we analyze with fillet welds typically is that worst case cross section. So let's let's take a look at what the geometry of that is because that's that's important. So this is what our the weld looks like initially as two dimensions that are h. Okay, and we want to find out what this distance is here. So this was a right triangle to begin with. So let's, when we cut it in half, we've got something special. These are each going to be 45 degree angles. It's because 45 plus 45 plus 90 is 180, the sum of the interior angles of a triangle. Because of the symmetry, uh, this is going to be a new right triangle. So let's actually, let's actually um, turn this on its side. We're going to rotate it so that this end here is going to be flat now. Okay, so we've got this angle here is now on top, and we're cutting it in half like this. And these are now supposed to be our 45 degree angles, and this is also a right triangle here. And what we want to know is what is this distance here? Normally we call this distance T. We call it the throat thickness of the weld. So we're interested in that. 
Well, this is a 45 degree triangle, a uh, 45 degree angle, and this uh, hypotenuse here is H. And so we know that T is T is H, the hypotenuse, times the sine of 45 degrees. And sine of 45 degrees is root 2 over 2. And that's approximately 0 0.707 times h. And so you'll find this 0 0.707 in your book, and that's coming from the sine of 45 degrees, because we're cutting the weld at its smallest cross section that cuts the weld in two and separates the two pieces of the base metal. All right, so that's where that's going to come from. So in this problem, whenever we multiply, you know, what's the, what's the surface area here? For each weld, the area is h times 0.707 times the length, the depth into the page or along this direction, which is 1 inch here. So 0 0.707 times hl. Okay, let's analyze it now. We've got a force of 20 kips. And it's assumed to be, well, in this case, it turns out to be a shear stress, because what is the direction of the normal of this cross-section? The normal of this cross-section is in this direction, right? And the force is out of the page. They are perpendicular, so it is actually a shear stress in this case. And the stress is the force over two times the area, because we've got two welds. So we've got 20 kips, 20,000 pounds divided by 2 times, well, we didn't calculate this. what this was, that is equal to 0 0.17675, and 2 times 0 0.17675, just for reference, it's going to be 0.3535. But 20,000 pounds divided by that is 56, 1,577 PSI. That's pretty, that's pretty high. So is this safe? Well, we need to assess whether it's safe. We need to say, is this less than or equal to 0 0.3 times the ultimate tensile strength? The ultimate tensile strength in this case is 70 KSI because it is a 70 18 electrode. The 70 is the approximate ultimate, ultimate tensile strength, and it turns out to be the actual ultimate tensile strength, which is 21 KSI. And so no, 56 KSI is not less than 21 KSI. Uh, what do we do? Well, there's, uh, let's see what, what we could do to fix this thing. We could say that we need to, we want to require that tau is equal to 0 0.3 times the ultimate tensile strength. And so we would look for a weld material for which uh, that's equal to tau over 0 0.3, where tau is our actual stresses. So we could take this 56,577 divided by 0 0.3, and we could say, oh, well, we need a weld material that has an ultimate tensile strength of 188,590, or 188 KSI approximately. Are there weld materials like that? Well, we can look at our chart. Uh, nope, not anything that's common, so we're going to have to change something. So maybe what we want to do is adjust, maybe we want to stick with the same weld uh, material, and we could maybe change this length here. We could say, uh, note, this is not a safe design. We want to recommend that we have a longer length of weld. Probably can't change the thickness of the weld, or excuse me, the, the leg size of the weld, because our material is probably a quarter inch here. And you can't have a leg size that's uh, greater than the material thickness. I suppose it could be uneven. You could have a longer thickness, uh, longer leg on over here. But we can possibly change this length. So let's solve for the length that we would need in order to make this work out. So in our case, we say that we want F over 2 times the area. But the area is root 2 over 2 of 0.707 times h times l. So we're just substituting in for a this 0.707 hl, but 0.707 is root 2 over 2. I did that because we can simplify it, right? We want that to equal 0.3 times the ultimate tensile strength, 0 0.3 times the ultimate tensile strength. So we're going to solve for the l that's going to make that happen. 
So we'll bring L up over onto the right side. But we can also bring these two down to the bottom. And that gives us what L we would need. So 20,000 divided by root 2 quarter 0 0.3 and 70 KSI. And it's 2.694 inches. So maybe we would round that up. We could say, let's round that up to 2.75 inches to make it a little bit nicer dimension, two and three quarters inches. So that's one way we could fix the problem. If we were given this design, asked to analyze it and correct it, that's maybe what we'd recommend, assuming that this is long enough. Otherwise, we'd have to go back to the drawing board. Maybe we'd have to change both the electrode and, um, and the length. Or maybe what we could do is add a weld back here. So our next problem is actually to analyze a weld that's back here. This was considered to be a, a parallel fillet weld because the fillet weld, the direction, was long in the direction of the force. We're going to analyze this transverse fillet weld. This fillet weld has a length in this direction and the force is in this direction. Now we're still going to pretend that it's going to break on a cross section, this minimum cross section that we had before. We're still going to use this root 2 over 2, so uh, looking at it on this diagram, I suppose that you could show the weld is looking like this here, and so the cross section that we're going to cut it on is here. And even though this force is not perpendicular to the cross section or parallel to the cross section, we pretend it's a shear stress. We just blindly say tau is equal to, we've got this force of 10 kips divided by, in this case, we've just gotten area A, and the area A is 0 0.707 times H times L. Uh, and that is, in this case, the length is 2 inches, and H is 1 quarter. So we have 0 0.3535 inches squared. And so that's 10,000 pounds divided by 0 0.3535. That is 28. 0.29 KSI. We say is tau less than 0 0.3 times SUT? So closer this time, because this is about half, this is exactly half of the stress we had last time. 0.3 times the ultimate tensile strength we already calculated. It was 21 KSI. Is that true? 28 is less than 21? No, we've got another bad one. Who's designing these things? They're all bad. So what could we do in this case? Well, maybe in this one, it looks a lot closer. Maybe we can choose another weld material because actually this time we can't change the length. So we better be able to change the weld material. So we're looking for tau is equal to 0 0.3 SUT. We're going to solve for SUT is equal to tau over 0 0.3. Our actual stress is something like 28.29 KSI. Divide that by 0 0.3, and we get 94.3 KSI. So I think that what we could do in this case is we could recommend that we use an E100 series electrode.